It's a super mega hyper flashlight from AliExpress, commonly sold on other platforms too. And this is one of these devices that looks great, but is cheap. It's about three pounds. So let's see what corners they've cut to make this. It is rechargeable. It also has the little four LEDs here that show you the charge status. And if I turn it on, on the first setting, even though that's the highest setting, it is pulsive modulating. That means that I have to warn you that the next setting, which is the dim setting, may have more flicker. So flicker alert. Not too bad. But the next setting is the strobe setting. I'll just point my hand down like this to block it and it's quite slow. It's more a pulsating flash. And then the next setting is the side cob setting, which just basically also pulses modulates. How weird. Have they skimped with resistors or something like that? It has a USB-C port for charging uh, and that's it. Um, interesting things about the package itself. It does have seven LEDs in the front. Let me show you the seven LEDs at the lower setting. Oh, that definitely is flickery. And uh, it's also got these little ribs in the grip, which is for when you want to put a bit of string or something around a, a ceiling joist or something. And then by hanging it in different ones, it will potentially hang at a different angle from the ceiling. So you can set the angle by choosing where you hang it. Okay, right. Screwdriver, let's open it up. Loud beepy noise in the background because I've left my mobile phone next to the speakers. This is kind of fitting. Um, it's not great. I did poke screwdrivers in initially and I couldn't find any that was ideal because this has quite deep recessed screws there. So not great. But this will do. And if it takes too long, if they're not coming out easily, which they're kind of coming out, then I'll pause. Actually, you know, I will just pause there because uh, all I'm doing is taking screws out of a piece of plastic at the moment. One moment, please. OK, well, that was messy. I had to drill this screwdriver screw out here because I, I just couldn't get any screwdriver to go in and then chewed it up. So here's the big reveal of the battery and the electronics. Hopefully the screwdriver, the drill hasn't smashed right through something because it went through quite quickly. So I'm guessing the front is going to pop off. Let's get a flat blade screwdriver and encourage that because I think it is just clipped on. This is very destructive. And then we'll see what size of lithium cells in there. How is this held on? It's held on like that. Are we ready for the big reveal? Uh, that screw isn't out either. Oh, there we go. It's an 18650, which is a surprise, and an aluminium back to the LED panel. I think everything has more or less survived my carnage. Um, the cob LED, how is that held in? Is it clipped or stuck in? Is that just slid in? Hard to say, actually. Oh, there is a little pin here. Ah. The plastic front plate is what's holding this in. So if I push, unclip the, hold on, where is the spudger? Tools everywhere. This has been a very destructive opening. Yeah, this is a, this isn't, this isn't a good opening at all. It's, it's very, very destructive. Ugh. But to be honest, uh, that's fine. So the cob is held in place by that. Is there a screw in this circuit board? There's a couple of screws in this circuit board. Let's see if we can get them out without destruction. Use this screwdriver. Tried every screwdriver I've got. It just managed to elude the correct size. Right here. And we'll also take this off for completeness. I'll zoom down this so you get a better view. I should have done that earlier, shouldn't I? Yes. It's not going back together again, but that's okay. It will be salvaged for the LED arrays and circuitry. And the lithium cell shall be tested. It says 800 milliamp hour. I mean, that's not generous, but at least they're being honest on it. Well, I say that I've not tested it yet. Here's the reflector. Here's the LED array. Looks neat enough. Unusual little LED 
days. Can't remember what that form factor is called. 2323, possibly. That would kind of fit. Or 3030. Oh, 3030-7D, so it is 3 millimeter. Well, let's test that. I have a device that can, can uh, measure that. Three millimeters spot on. They are three millimeter square LEDs. Okay, let's uh, reverse engineer the circuit board and see what we can find out in this. One moment, please. Reverse engineering is complete and it's thrown a wild card into the mix. It's almost a standard design, but it's not. So let's take a look at the back of the circuit board first, where we have two connections going out for the main LED array. We have the firmly attached USB-C connector. We have four indicator LEDs, and this is where it gets complex. They're doing something I've never seen before. And there's the switch, the clicky button aside. The text is all reversed just because I have flipped it so that it correlates to the circuit board on the other side. Things worthy of note. The USB-C connector here does have the CC terminals used and they've got their 5.1K resistor. So if you plug it into a smart charger, it is going to put out the 5 volts that is required. We've got the microcontroller and a charge control chip. Now, it's not a standard charge control chip. It's doing something weird. It's got two output pins going via 1K resistors to the LEDs on the other side, but also that's being monitored by the microcontroller and it's toggling a third pin based on the output of this. It's very strange. After that, we've got the microcontroller monitoring the switch, which is off the end here, and we've got two classic Y1 NPN transistors, one for the COB array and one for the main LED array. And the COB array is notable for being driven directly, but the main one has a 100 ohm resistor. It's also worth mentioning that they've allowed for pull-down resistors here, but they've not actually used them, so they're probably keeping their options open for MOSFETs. Um, anything else to mention here? The programming resistor for setting the current around about 500 milliamp, which is very appropriate because the lithium cell, despite being marked 800 milliamp, it's got quite a high impedance. I put it on test at 500 milliamps, and uh, the, as soon as I did, the voltage immediately dropped about half voltage under that load, and the end result with a continuous load of approximately 500 milliamps was 500 milliamp power. It was quite a quick test. Let me bring in the schematic and we can explore this. I shall zoom in on it a little bit more. I have zoomed. OK, so it starts off a fairly logical way. It's got the USB-C connector with its two 5.1K resistors going to the zero volt rail, which signals that this is a load and to send power. It's got a decoupling capacitor. This is good. And then it's got this mysterious charge control chip with a odd configuration with its usual programming resistor for setting the current that the lithium cell is going to be charged with. I've put the lithium cell way over here and its decoupling capacitor for the microcontroller just to keep everything out of the way of the rest of the circuitry. Now normally you'd have maybe a couple of pins in these and one would say charging, one could be enabled but the, or could also be charging and charged effectively. But in this case each of those pins is driving a couple of LEDs and it's doing some very clever stuff to give a bar graph effect. Now, you'll notice that the LEDs are not in the correct sequence. This is because I was just basically drawing it as it was and in hindsight, I could have shuffled the LED directions because in reality, um, it goes, it, it can't, you can't control the LEDs individually given what this is actually doing, but it's good for doing a bar graph. So it goes over to the microcontroller and uh, it monitors one pin of that that's driving the LEDs. And it, from what I can see, it simply inverts it. So there's no major software load. It's basically saying, test the file if it's a uh, high, set the output low and vice versa. So it's just continually just monitoring that. And uh, that keeps things simple. It means it's not tying the microcontroller up, but it's still effectively uses the microcontroller as a simple inverter, which is odd. I'll show you more on a little doodle a little about that afterwards. The microcontroller has the button. It's got the input pulled high and then the button pulling it low when you push the button. Push the button. And there's the two transistors uh, with a resistor with a 100 ohm resistor. Just on one of them. I'm not sure why. Is that trying to use the resistor as a controlled current limiter? Not sure. But the pulsed modulation that we saw 
I think that's to do with um, seeing what current happens when this transistor is fully turned on and then using pulsar modulation to bring it within a sensible range of maybe heat dissipation or something. I'm not really sure, but the transistor, the wiring, everything, the lithium cell, they're all limiting the current through that. Odd. Okay, let's take a look at this, which is very odd. Now, I have scribbled stuff down here. A very crude scribble, because I was just doodling and trying to work things out. I even uh, fully discharged the cell and then charged it all up, monitoring to see which direction it went in, then worked out the correct orientation of the LEDs. Oh, I should label that as well, that that is effectively A, but really, instead of calling it A, I should actually call it B inverted, because that's what I think it is. And initially, when it wants to turn on the first LED or flash the first LED, because it's continually oscillating between two modes, um, it will make B positive, and uh, that will then, by default, through the inverter, in, which is just being done in software, will make this negative, and that will light this LED here. And here's the truth table for that, because the C is left floating, but there's other situations that, uh, yeah, it's complex actually but anyway when it's got you can't i tried working out if you could light individuals leds just by having that combination but because the way it works it can only do a sequential bar graph build up but it can flash the next led in the sequence so for instance here it's oscillating between two states and for the a b and c it's low high high and then high low and floating um because it's yeah, it's tri-state multiplexing with it. Try and work this out yourself as a puzzle. It's quite complex. But then when you want the fourth LED to light, it's low, high, high, and then it's high, low, low. It's very strange, but it's clever. I couldn't find that chip. I did a search for SOT23-6 um, uh, lithium charger and then tried to throw in other variables like um, bar graph or... Four LEDs, I just couldn't find that uh, that chip. It's one I've never seen before. And very strange that it is just basically relying on that external inverter just to provide that extra functionality of driving the LEDs. But there we have it. it you know, it's actually more complex than I was expecting. It could be that the circuit board is a good base for your own flashlight projects, although the patterns it uses aren't that terribly exciting. Huh, there's the LEDs turned on because... Uh, Effectively, I've turned outputs on. Um, but it's quite interesting. Um, the cob has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. It's got 14 chips on it. And this has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 chips on that. But that's it. I shall provide a link to it if you want to get one just for the novelty aspect. Because it does look quite stylish. And certainly this circuit board is quite novel in its own right. And of course, you've got two LED circuit boards as part of the deal.